Hey my awesome people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to take you through a little bit to understand how the Flexbox containers work in Elementor. Basically, the Flexbox model is a new layout that Elementor is going to be enrolling out very soon and that is the way you'll be able to create your layouts in Elementor, which will be replacing the old section and column layouts in Elementor. And in this video, I'll demo for you how you can create this kind of layout and other ways you can play around with different layouts using the Flexbox container. So to actually get started, we are going to go back here to our dashboard and we're going to come over here to Elementor settings. Since the Flexbox container is not officially rolled out, we have to go to experiments and we have to make sure that we have the Flexbox container active. So make sure it's active and then go down and save changes. So once you have the Flexbox container enabled, then you'll be able to use this new layout setting in your designs using the Elementor page builder. By the way, this is part of what is included in my Elementor Pro Bootcamp course. Do you want to build professional grade websites with ease? Join my Elementor Pro Bootcamp and unlock the full potential of the page builder. Learn to create stunning websites, maximizing Elementor Pro's dynamic and advanced features in no time. With self-paced learning, lifetime course updates, and unlimited email support, you'll never get stuck without any hope. Enroll now and start building your dream website with Elementor Pro. Follow the link on the screen or simply visit bootcamp.gotechug.com. So back inside here, we have a blank canvas. When you look over here in the widgets area, we have a widget called a container. Think about a container as a blank sheet of paper that gives you the possibility to start with your creative journey. And you can add a container to your blank canvas in three different ways. You can either drag the container to the canvas. You can either use the add or the plus sign here and then select a container layout. But we're going to come back to that later. Or you can simply just come here to the widgets area and drag any widgets to the canvas and that will automatically create a container just like you see here. I'll delete these two and I'll come here to add a new container. And as you see here, we have different container layouts. We have a container in a column direction. We have a container in a row direction. We have a container that has two columns. And this is another container with two columns, but of different dimensions. And all these other layouts are different containers with different dimensions. Let's suppose I select the container with a column direction. This means I have one container that I can use in my layout. So each container that you add to your layout can be customized individually. And that means that you can come over here and adjust the container settings as you wish. We can add as many containers as we want inside an existing container. Call it nesting. So for example, when I drag this container, that means that I have now two containers, the parent container and the child container. I can further duplicate the child container. Now I'll be having two containers or two child containers with a parent container. I can even go further and add a container inside the child container. Now that means that I'll have one container inside another container, which is inside another container. So the container that is holding other containers, we call it like the parent container. And every other container that is inside another container, that is a child container. So in this case, I can further go ahead and duplicate this container to have two containers or to have two child containers of this container. And now here we can as well go ahead and add our widgets as we so wish. We can even further change the direction now of this child container but remember the parent container of this container was having a different row direction just like you see over right here now let's look deeper into how you can get started using the containers when it comes to designing or creating your layouts so i pulled up my navigator here and i have a layout that i've created using a container just for a second i want you to think about how i've created this container in elementor and how many containers that i'm having at the moment Okay, the quick answer is we have only one container and that container is having three widgets inside 
and they are all positioned in a different way. In the previous layouts of Elementor, where we had to use columns and sections, we would have to have like three columns here holding each and every individual widget separately, and then we have to position that widget inside each column. But now with containers, as you can see over here in the navigator, we are able to use just one container and add our widgets and position those widgets individually. So how do we do such a thing? I'm going to come over here and add a new container. That container is going to be running in the row direction. I'm going to come here to the widgets. I'll look up for an image widget, image box widget, sorry. That's it. I am going to duplicate this widget into three. I am going to come here to the first widget. I'll come to style and I'm going to increase the image width to 100%. I'll come to the content. I'll change the content color to white. I'm going to come to advanced. I'll come to background and I'll add a background color or a background type. I'll use this. I'll come to the layout up here and I'll unlink the padding values. I'll add a bottom padding of 30. Very fast, we're able to achieve a similar layout of that sort. I'll copy this style and apply the same style on all the other image boxes. So for us to be able to play around with this kind of layout using our container, we are going to adjust the height of our container. And how do we do that? We can come over here to the minimum height settings and we can set that to a figure that we want. In this case, I'm going to change this to viewport height and I'll make it to be 100. Now we have something that looks like this, which is pretty ugly. So how do we remove this kind of ugly look on our widget? As you see that this part of the image box is stretching way down to the end of the container height is part of the container settings and we can disable that so when you select the image box and come to advance we have the option that is called align self and right now this image box is set to stretch when i come over here and i set this to be at start you see that now it's no longer stretching if i say that stretch it is going to stretch right back to the container height for this case I want to set this to align at the center. Now that means that it's going to align at the center of the container, only this item, not all of the items. I'll come and select the next widget, come to advanced, and I'm going to set this to be at the start. I'll select the last widget, come to advanced, and I'm going to set this to be at the end. So we have a layout that looks just like this. And just in a simple and easy way, you are able to adjust your layout to the look and feel of how you want, but just using one container. So the other part is how you can reorder these widgets on the canvas. So right now I have this last widget selected. If I come over here and I want this widget to come first, I can simply click over here. And now I have the widget coming first over right here or coming at the start. In case I want this to be coming at the very end, I can say, go to the end and now i have positioned it to the end of the container that aside you can as well come back here to the container itself and you can as well change the orientation of the container in our case it was running in the horizontal direction but we can even say we want it now to run in the vertical direction and now you see that changes how even the layout looks like we can set it to go into the reversed option so remember if it was in the horizontal row now, if we go to the horizontal reversed or the row reversed, that's how it would look like. So it means that it has now alternated the design or the flow of the widgets in the container. Now, let's go and have a look at another example of how we can work with the Flexbox containers. I have created this container over here having three of our widgets, and I want you to think about it for a second. How many containers do you think we have in this layout? I hope you guessed it right. Let's try to recreate the same layout together. So I am going to add a new container. This container will run in the column direction. I am going to add some padding. We come to advanced padding and unlink all the values. I'll use percentages. Top and bottom, I'll add a padding of five, five percent. I'll come to the style. I'll add a background color. So I've added a container that is running in the column direction and I've given it a background. I'm going to come to the widgets and I'll look up for an accordion widget, drag it over here. 
I want to give this accordion a background color. So come here to background color. I want to give it white. Now, to achieve a layout like this up here, we have to do a few things. First, we are going to duplicate this accordion three times. We can now specify a size of each accordion the way we want it to be like. So for example, in this case, I'm going to select this accordion, come to advanced, under the width option, I'm going to set this to be a custom width and I want it to be 33.3%. Now that will take 33.3% of the whole content width. So from here to the end of the content width of the container, I'll select the second one, come to advanced, and I'll do the same. So make sure that the value is in percentage over here. The same I'll do for the last one. I'll start with a medial accordion and come over here and align it to be in the center. And now I want to align the other accordion and align it to the end. That's how I get something like that. Now I want to reduce the gap between each accordion here. That means I can just go ahead and select the container and come over here to the layout option. Down there is an option that goes like gap between elements. I want that to be zero. And there we are. But how about if we want to have one accordion that is stretching through all the way to the other side? You can simply just come over here, select the accordion, come here and just set it to be default. That will be 100% and then you'll have a layout that looks like this. So I'll set this back to our custom width by having it selected. Custom width, great. Now let's look into the mobile device. So come here to the mobile device. Now you see our accordions look really terrible. What the Flexbox container brings to you on the table is that you can further go ahead and customize how these widgets look like on the mobile devices. So in this case, when I select my accordion, I can just come back here to the widget, to the width settings and I set it to be full width. I'll do the same for all the other accordions and I can even put back my gap between the elements. So when I select the container, come back here to gap between elements and make it to be 20. And I can as well add my padding. So I'll unlink the values and say right will be 5% and left will be a 5%. The same for the top and bottom, something like that. Now, when I go back to my desktop, we still have our normal layout that we created, but that changes if someone switches and is viewing this website on the mobile device. So on the other hand, you can create a layout just like this over here. I have a services container, which actually has two containers. So the first container and also the second container. And by the, if you look into my services container, which is this over here, if I expand it, you realize that it has two main containers. The first container, which is this container with three widgets. So the first widget, then the second widgets, and then the third widget, which is the button widget. And this container is running in the vertical direction. So if I change that to this, that's how it will look like. But in this case, I want it to be in the vertical direction. Then the other container, which is holding the, uh, the icon boxes in this case, it is actually having two containers right inside that container and they are running in the vertical direction as well. However, the inside containers or the inner containers in this case, they are running in the horizontal direction. And in the case, if you wanted them to run in the vertical direction, this is how our icon boxes would look like, which we didn't want to be. So that's why you see that our icon boxes are running in the horizontal direction in this case. You can grow, shrink, or even align individually this specific icon box right over here. Therefore, there are vast ways you can play around with layouts using the Elementor Flexbox container, just like I have shown you in this video. And in case you want to expand your knowledge in Elementor, I recommend you checking out my Elementor Pro Bootcamp. Like for example, how you can style up such a button using CSS, that is also covered in my Elementor Pro Bootcamp course. Thank you so much for watching, have a good time, and goodbye.